So tonight here at the London Arena, we were to have had a couple of young British heavyweights making a comeback after their first professional defeats. The very promising Danny Williams was to have been in action. Sadly, we heard that he never even reached the London Arena this evening. Williams involved in a car crash and reporting in unfit to box because of whiplash injuries. We wish him a speedy recovery. That left the way clear for Pele Reid to come back to action tonight. You may remember Reid swiftly early on in his career knocking them all out. And a crowd pleaser he was. Eight wins in the first round and all. Simply destroying everything put in his way early on. And a big crowd pleaser. But that was early on. Eight fights all in the first to second round. He will go on to unify the heavyweight title in the next two or three years. The usual high praise from your trainer, from Brendan Ingle. Already a martial arts champion as well, Reid. And Ingle used a variety of unusual methods to boost his confidence. Be better off than you are. I would you rather be a fish? I didn't actually buy that single. When it came to the serious test, the first serious test of Reid's career, well beaten in a dual championship showdown with Julius Francis. And hopefully I've worked on, on the right things and I'm able to to, to perform the you know the, the corrected techniques on the day on the nights and hopefully I'll look back in hindsight and say it was a blessing in disguise when you lose you think hey I gotta start taking this more seriously you know I mean not everybody you're not gonna be everybody you know it's possible but not everybody does it but having said that sometimes defeat can be the best thing in a, in a boxer's career it can either make you stronger or it can it can be the breaking of a boxer so hopefully it's, it's, the, it's the making of me so Reid back in action tonight. The record to date then, 14 fights, 13 wins, and that one defeat last time out. So could he regroup? Not an easy looking test first time back against Orlin Norris, the veteran American, former WBA World Cruiserweight champion, now at heavyweight. Here's what happened. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this contest is a heavyweight contest of eight three minute rounds. And introducing our boxers firstly in the red corner, wearing the green and yellow, and coming from Birmingham, uh, he weighed in at 16 stone, 9 pound, and holds a 14 uh, fight professional record. Uh, 13 wins, 13 wins by way of knockout, one loss. He's the former WBO Intercontinental Champion, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please welcome uh, Pele Reid. Uh, His opponent, ladies and gentlemen, across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, trimmed with white, comes from Lubbock in Texas in the United States. He weighed in at 15 stone, 10 pounds, and holds a 55-5 professional record. 49 wins, 25 wins by way of knockout, with five losses and one no decision. He comes to the ring tonight, the former North American Boxing Federation heavyweight champion and former WBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting All In Night Train Norris. Your referee for this contest, Mr. Larry Thompson, and this is eight three minute rounds. I stop when I tell you to, break when I tell you to, knock down your tight and you'll call and stay there until I say box on. Defend yourself at all times. Touch gloves now, good luck to you both, lads. All in Norris, a decade ago, he was among the top ten world heavyweights. Some people wondered if he might be a threat even to Mike Tyson, very similar in style. Pele Reid returning after being embarrassed, really, in a challenge to Julius Francis for the British and Commonwealth title when he looked just a raw novice in the yellow and green Pele Reid. And all in Norris's first fight for 10 months. It looks like he might be trying to reinvent himself. He's come in here with a new nickname. He used to call himself Juice. He's now known as Night Train. That was Sonny Liston's old theme tune. How much has Norris got left? That's one of the questions here. And is Pele Reid in way too deep again? Well, I think whatever he's got left, this is a, a rather tough rehabilitation for Pele Reid. They're taking a, a big chance here with a, a proven good fighter. Yeah. 
Reed has had a difficult time of late, not only that defeat against Julius Francis, but his father died quite recently. He's caught here by two big right hands. Defense not good enough again in the third one. Has him sagging by the ropes. It could be over in the first round here. Pele Reed hardly knows where he is. His senses are scrambled. Can he carry on? He doesn't really look in any kind of condition to do so, to be honest. Referee Larry Thompson giving him every possible chance, but I'm not sure that was the right decision because Norris will pounce here. It's got to be stopped. It is stopped in the first round. And all in Norris, maybe all too predictably, the former world cruiserweight champion, a man who's operated at the top level, had way, way too much for a bewildered, bemused, and totally outclassed Pelé Reed. Yes, it was really, it looked on the cards. He just, you know, coming back, a rehabilitation like Orland Norris is just all too much. His defense was very poor in his last fight. And I think, you know, it was too tough to put him in with somebody like Norris, who knows so much, who's experienced, and who quickly got to that defense. And who clearly still harbors a little ambition as well. Maybe, maybe he's being groomed for a shot at the WBO title. Remember, he was twice due to fight Herbie Hyde before Hyde developed various injuries. This is the finish. Clubbing rights, Glenn. Yes, it was good hooks from Norris. You could just see the defenses are all over. This is something that Reed had to learn, and I don't think this was the, the right sort of fight for him to learn something like that in. His defenses were just not adequate. I think you've got to say, really, that coming off the defeat against Julius Francis, he was just thrown to the wolves here, really, Pelle Reed. Yes, I, I think he, he was. It was, really was asking an awful lot for somebody coming off a, a crushing defeat to Julius Francis to go in with Orlin Norris, who you know, is a proven at world level. We've been in with some very good fighters in there. Good left hook, chopping right hand. And he's all over the place, Reed. The hands are down. There's no defense there. And really, it's just a matter of Norris getting those clubbing hooks in to finish it. I do feel sorry for Pele. It wasn't so long ago he was being groomed as a big prospect. Here he found himself put in the opponent's red corner tonight. There was a switch right beforehand and a bit of an eyebrow raising from Brendan Ingle, the trainer. But really, you just wonder what Pele Reed can do after this. He's got to go right the way back and rebuild his confidence somehow, some way. And Norris will probably get that shot at the WBO title, you know. What did you think about that fight tonight? I mean, he'd come off a three-round defeat in a British title fight. It looked like he was in way too deep with you, and that's the way it turned out. Well, I, 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 didn't, I know nothing about that. Uh, there were a few people coming up and telling me, asking me things about it. I didn't want to know because <clears throat> if I look at a fighter, get to analyzing them too much, I get relaxed because I have a lot of speed and I can and it, and it lets me tend to relax. So I make a I make a giant out of him when I don't see him. I make him stronger than what he is, faster, and, and it makes me sharper when I don't see him. So I I didn't listen to anything. I didn't know anything about him. You're 33 now. You've been a world champion. You've been in with the top guys at, at heavyweight as well. How much ambition do you still retain? Well, I still have a lot because because uh, my goal that I've been seeking, I, I've never attained it, you know. I, I had to, I went down the cruiserweight because I was forced because there was no heavyweights that wanted to fight me. So, uh, so I moved down the cruiserweight. I won that title. And now I'm, uh, you know, coming back up, you know, to see if I can get a heavyweight shot. Maybe somebody will overlook me, you know, and, uh, and I get my opportunity. Talk me through it from the uh, first bell. I was, I was trying to relax, uh, pre perhaps relax too much I think um, and you know basically he just caught me um, when he when he hit me with a shot I went down and I was, I was trying to get up and the referee just, just waved his hands um, and that was basically it wasn't much to it it was first round and <laughs> you know it's one of the things but life must go on do you think it was unfair that they gave you this type of opponent after your loss to Julius Francis Oh, we can all, all question things in hindsight, but um, obviously I took the fight, so you know it's, it doesn't make sense for me to start saying, "Oh, it's unfair." I took the fight, believing that I could win the fight. Um, you know, I just wanted to think it was an odd, it was an odd, very odd combat fight. But even in my worst, you know, what I mean, I couldn't imagine this outcome. You know, what I mean, but such is life. You know, what I mean, I've um, <laughs> I've experienced a small part, a portion of life, and this is. Um, Obviously, another bit to add towards it. 
Your heart really goes out to that young man. He's a, de yeah. he's a delightful young he's person. He's a lovely guy. But he has been put out on a limb here tonight, Barry. Big he style, was, hasn't he? He was ridiculously overmatched. I mean, I, I, I'm wondering what, what, uh, what Brendan Ingle's wisdom was in taking that fight. It was stupid. And well, Pelle's taking it for himself and saying, I, well, I, I took it. Well, of him. course he did. But, I mean, he listens to Brendan. Brendan has a great influence on him. He inculcates most of the kids that he works with in the gym. And uh, you know he he overmatched the guy, and it was you know it's silly. It can be the it could be the ruin and ruination of the guy. He's uh, obviously very vulnerable, Jim, uh, but he was way over the top. There. He was overmatched. Jim, well I think it was disgraceful. If I was his manager, I would be ashamed of myself. But the, what makes me feel even worse, I think there is so much good raw material in Pelerin. If he had gone to someone like Terry Lawless in the early days and was taught the basics, the man has never been taught the basics. Now. He's knocked out at domestic level, so what's the next move? Step him up to world level, get him knocked out again. Well, Disgraceful. it's pretty tough to see where he does go from here, Reid, but let's hope that somewhere the good in him can flourish. Let's hope so, anyway. Uh, thoughts of Gary Mason on that with Adam? Gary, Pele Reid, badly, badly exposed or just thrown in way too deep? Um, at this stage of the game, I don't think that fight... Um, he was mentally ready for it. He's proven that his chin is not as strong as, it, um, as we thought it was, you know? Um, but Oli Norris would be a good fight for, uh, what's the German's name you said? Klitschko. Klitschko. Oli, somebody like Oli Norris would be a good fight for Klitschko because you know he's durable, he has the mental attitude. Yeah. So we can find out then whether Klitschko has the punch along with the mental attitude. I have to ask you, can Pele Reid fight? Well, Pele Reid speaks for himself, doesn't he? Um, the last two fights, two knockouts, can't take a punch. You've got to be able to take a punch if you're really going to be a serious fighter. Thanks, Gary. Got to be able to do it every time in the ring, whatever your level. And another case in point tonight here at the London Arena, Jeff McCreesh was in.